Hello and welcome to your favourite clickbaity title. Let me let you in on a little secret. There's one simple trick you can use to get cheaper train tickets in the UK. How cheap? Well, it really depends, but the cost goes all the way down to zero. How, you ask? Well, I hope you do all your travel from Drayton Park. Here we are in Drayton Park, where travel is technically free. Why? Because there's no ticket barrier. What? Now let me be clear from the off. I paid for my ticket to get in. Tapped in, tapped out. Love you TFL, please hire me. But what if, hypothetically, you didn't do that? Well, perform the right set of changes and you could get all the way to George Mus Junction without paying a penny. I want to tell you a little more about fantastic ticket barriers and where not to find them. But before I do that, let's talk about why someone might try and skip a train fare. Even though, legally, let's be clear, they definitely shouldn't. This is how to defeat the railways of Britain. Let's talk train tickets. They're expensive. Roughly as expensive as a newsworthy gold toilet. Okay, maybe they're not so expensive as we think. Buy in advance and you can get a good price. The challenging thing is that this sort of so-called airline-style pricing only benefits the people who can afford to plan ahead. So the cheapest tickets aren't available to the people who need them. That's exactly why most European train operators don't use this model, because they understand trains are a public good. Every train ticket at 10 quid, instead of 5 at 2 quid, and the rest at 200. What's more, the pricing of different travel modes is totally skew if. The fuel for cars and other private vehicles is wildly cheap compared to tickets for public transport. Over the past 20 years, rail fares have increased in real terms by 3.4%. In contrast, the price of petrol for private cars has decreased by 4.3%. It's roughly 174 miles from London to York. That's an anytime train ticket for £172.50 or roughly £24 of petrol, which could be divvied through four. But get on at Drayton Park, where there's no ticket barriers, and the journey is free, because there's no ticket barriers at York neither. So to help us understand this, I wrangled a dataset for the whole country to find out where the ticket barriers are, and therefore the best places to skip a fare. There's a huge differential by operator. Northern, which runs 18% of the stations, has only 4% of the stations with ticket barriers. Meanwhile, the route with the most passengers, but no ticket barriers, is York to Scarborough. But ticket barriers have only taken off in the last couple of decades. Every country has different approaches to skippers. From the passive aggression of France to the ultimately quite trusting punch card system in Berlin. What's weird is exactly how much our private train operating companies hate skippers. There are posters everywhere disincentivizing people from doing it. This is really odd, pushing a sense of guilt or criminality onto passengers for riding a mode of transport while they're on that mode of transport. Like projecting Jack the Ripper vibes onto anyone who vaguely breaches East London. What's particularly funny is how that exact same terminology, fares fare, was used in the 1980s in London to advertise bringing down fares. I think this illustrates how the mood has shifted. For almost 50 years, the railways were a public service for the passenger, to be run in their interest. Now, the passenger is an inconvenience. In other words, it's now individuals' responsibility to accept the level at which the fare is set instead of the government's responsibility to set the fare at an acceptable level. No wonder folks skip fares. If you don't feel the service is run for you, why would you want to pay for it? So what's the upshot of this? It isn't that you should skip a fare. No, 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 I never told you to do that. No, no, no. The simplest conclusion is that when the government of the day returns the railways to public ownership, it needs to run them in a way that benefits passengers to run routes that connect left-behind communities, to invest on an ongoing basis in the railway we have and build more of it when it's sustainable to do so. And finally, to stop treating us like criminals on our own public transport. Until then, how can I blame the skippers?